Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a Logic Pro X tip and trick tutorial video for ADSR. In this video, I'm going to show you a tip and trick that will allow you to quickly and easily edit your MIDI information and quantize your MIDI events in a way that keeps things musical. So if you've ever found yourself going into your MIDI regions, your software instrument regions inside of Logic, and manually moving notes around because maybe things are sounding just a little bit too robotic. This will be a cool tip and trick for you because it will allow you to avoid having to do it manually. You'll just have to set it with a couple buttons. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at how you can use the Q range over in the region inspector. Now, if you don't see the inspector menu on your logic screen, you're crazy because I don't know how you mix <laughs> or do anything, but click this I over here. And then you'll see these little drop down boxes appear over your track headers. What you can do is drop the arrow down for region, and you might see more right here. Click it so you can see everything. And you'll notice it says down here, Q range, and a bunch of other settings like Q velocity, Q length, etc. This Q range is gonna work off of your quantization or your quantized value up here at the top of the region. So I would say most producers, engineers, DJs, what they'll do to quantize MIDI is they'll jump into the actual piano roll to do it. So this session here, what I'm gonna show you is a fairly raw uh, session I'm working on for a sound set, but I wanted to show it to you where before it, was, before it was mixed because it'll actually be conducive to this tutorial. So I re I've recorded this lead and you can see here, if we look at the, the MIDI information that it's not perfectly on time. Uh, it's how I played it, which is some notes are close, some notes are a little wonky, this first one's pretty far off. Well, what a lot of people will do is they'll go in here, they'll highlight all the notes and they'll set their their quantized time, and this is the classic way of doing it. This is the, kind of more of the smart quantization in the newer versions of Logic. And then they will hit this, and you'll see that everything's quantized. And what you can do is you have this cross, this kind of mixed dry-wet blend where you can have certain things be a little bit more uh, on beat or not. So this is the old way of doing it. And this strength slider, you'll see if I have it up at 100, everything's right on beat, it's mechanical, it's perfect. If I turn this back, this starts to fall off beat, so does this one, and it will only ever go as far as you you played it. So for instance, it's not gonna go further out of time than I played it. But you don't know what the, the, the downside to using the strength slider is you don't actually know what musical values you're controlling. It's just a strength that goes zero to 100. So for that reason alone, I'm not a huge fan of that. So I'm going to edit undo or apple z that. And what we're going to do is make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go up to to the region inspector. And for the quantization, I'm going to select a 16th note because this pass is playing in a 16th note. Actually, before I do that, let's actually play this for you guys. Okay, you get the idea. So what we're gonna do is go back into the piano roll. Go up to here where it says quantize. Let's choose a value of 16th, of a 16th note. And you'll notice that everything is back perfect, perfect on time. It's right on all the, the beats, it's mechanically perfect. Just like if we went down here and hit quantized. Well, what we're gonna do is go to the Q range and I'm gonna check a negative value. Let's do one negative one over 190 second equals negative 20 ticks or negative 8.7 milliseconds. And as I do this, pay attention to the orange, this first orange note and this green note right here. Okay, you'll see that the red note didn't move, but the green note did. The green note moved to where I played it, which is, which is falling into this range of our Q range. It's kind of a quantization range. And when you go to a negative value, anything that falls outside of that range won't won't be, uh, or falls inside of that range rather, it won't be quantized. So this, my natural playing of this note is less than this value of negative one over 192 or, or 20, negative 20 ticks. This first red one, which it did change, was more than that value, so it quantized it to my grid setting. Now there's also positive settings. Now this will do the inverse. So this negative setting worked where it, it's the range is looking at my quantize is set to one over 16 or a 16th note. And then it's going off of this value. So if this is less than negative 8.7 milliseconds, it's not gonna touch those notes. 
Well, the positive value will work in the opposite fashion. And the positive value is helpful for if you played a region or a, a, a an event software instrument and you didn't consistently strike the values of the notes. For instance, you'll see that most of these values, length values, are pretty similar. I wasn't perfect, but that's okay. And what this will do is if you choose a higher value, if there's differences in note lengths in between it, it'll start to shift those around. It's kind of fun to play around with, but I find myself more often than not using these negative values because what this will do is it will keep this a little bit more humanistic. And for a genre like what you just heard, this is more in that hip hop vibe, it works because these notes are barely out of time. But what it'll do is maybe one note might pop out more or it might some things may not conflict with other elements within the mix. So there you guys go. There's a cool way to add more of the humanistic element back into your productions using the Q range in conjunction with the quantize in the region inspector. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, guys.